therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Huron. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today and recognize Whiteman Telecom. Whiteman has been nominated for a national award in the Tuned In Canada CCSA Awards. Whiteman Telecom is based out of Clifford, Ontario, which is shared by the member from Great Bruce Owen Sound, the member from Perth Wellington, as well as myself. Wow. It operates in 17 different exchanges in South Central Ontario. They are known for their advanced fibre to home technology that provides excellent phone service and some of the fastest high speed internet speeds in Canada. Tuned in Canada is a project that aims to highlight the work of local television and communication providers in Canada. They are sponsored by the Canadian Cable Systems Alliance. Every year they have an award where they recognize people who are making a difference in their community. And the winners receive a trophy and an opportunity nice. to donate up to $2,000 to a community charity of their choice. Whiteman Telecom has been nominated for the award known as Best Community Building Story. Well done. Radio In 2016, Whiteman Telecom partnered with Blue Water Radio Station to broadcast the first annual Blue Water on air for local health care radiothon. I called in, I made my pledge, and we had a lot of fun uh, challenging other local politicians to do the same. It was a six hour long live TV and radio show, and it raised over $40,000 for local hospitals. If they should have the honour of winning, both the Walker and, D and District Hospital Foundation and the Hanover and District Hospital yeah, Foundation yeah. will share the prize. Wow. There's two days left in the open online voting at tunedincanada.com. Let's help Whiteman win. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to talk about an important part of my community, our local Lions and Lioness Clubs. Three Lions Clubs will be celebrating anniversaries this weekend. The Stanford Lions Club, the Lioness Club will be celebrating 60th anniversary. The Chippewa Lions Club will be celebrating 75th anniversary, and the Fort Erie Lions Club will be celebrating 90th anniversary. On behalf of our communities, I'd like to thank all the Lions and Lioness Clubs for the incredible work they do in our region each and every day. Mr. Speaker, the Lions do incredible work in Niagara, and here are some of the examples. The Sanford Lions and Lioness Club in Niagara Falls is, is known for harvest breakfasts, their Christmas dance, which are great events with terrific food and raise important, important money for community initiatives for organized like the Niagara Health System. The Fort Erie Club has a long history of helping the Fort Erie community. Funds raised for this, the work actually went to purchase the first ambulance at the Douglas Memorial Hospital. My community office is even in the Lions Club. Every day, myself and my staff get to witness the incredible programs they offer for seniors, such as their monthly senior lunches, bingos, bridge, and crib. Lastly, I'd also like to highlight the Chippewa Lions Club. They'll be hosting a free community appreciation event this Saturday with a barbecue, children's activities to thank the community for the support over the years. While the Lions Club's focus on hunger, diabetes, vision impairment in their community, they also contribute to opening and closing Camp Dorset which offers a vacation retreat for those who need dialysis. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the province, I would like to congratulate all these Lions and Lioness Clubs on their anniversaries and thank them for the incredible work they do in our community. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member, Mr. member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to celebrate the 15th anniversary of Asian Heritage Month, which is recognized every May. To celebrate Asian Heritage Month and Ontario 150 on May the 10th, I will be co-hosting with the East Asian Women's Empowerment Group Celebration 15: Voices of Chinese Canadian Women in Ontario at the Toronto Reference Library. Celebration 15 will honor Chinese Canadian women in Ontario who have contributed to the changing history of Canada and another 15 women who have strengthened our local communities. These women have devoted tireless passion, time and commitment to shaping Ontario. They have provided leadership in art, civic engagement, culture, education and community building. Celebration 15 will recognize exceptional Chinese Canadian women, including Greta Wong Grant, the first Chinese Canadian lawyer called to the bar in 1946, former Senator Dr. Vivian Poi, who brought forward a Senate motion designating May as Asian Heritage Month in Canada. 
uh, Adrian Clarkson, the former Governor General of Canada. As first Chinese Canadian female MPP, I'm proud of my Asian heritage. I'm privileged to represent Scarborough Asian Corps, one of the most diverse and multicultural ridings in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, on May the 10th, I'm honoured to recognize these trailblazing Chinese Canadian women who demonstrate how diversity strengthens our community and contribute to our economy, and most importantly, Mr. Speaker, making Ontario a great place to work, play, and work. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to recognize Children's Mental Health Week in Ontario. It's a great opportunity to recognize the importance of speaking up about mental health. Last year, we had a tragic loss of a number of youths in Oxford County. These tragedies, tragedies have left a hole in our community. I met with students who said we need to do more to provide mental health education and services in our schools. They also told me that bullying is still a problem in schools and online. According to the survey done by Children's Mental Health Ontario, over 28 per cent of youth indicated that mental health issues are not covered in the school curriculum. Meanwhile, over 35 per cent said that mental health issues were only covered once in one class. We need to do more to educate students on how to cope with their struggles. I'm happy to announce that this weekend, on May the 7th, Kids Help Phone will host their fundraiser, Walk for So Kids Can Talk, presented by the BMO for the first time ever in Oxford. This is a very exciting for our community, and I commend Kids Help Phone for their great work supporting our children and, raising, and for raising awareness in this important issue. I encourage any young people who are having problems to reach out to Kids Help Phone or their local mental health organization. It's okay to talk about it. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm standing in the House today to recognize and congratulate the team that shaped and produced the movie Painted Land in search of the Group of Seven from their Barbara Sears Award for Best Editorial Research at the Canadian Screen Awards in Toronto last March. Congratulations, Goulet River adventurer Joni and Gary McGuffin, as well as Sault Ste. Marie artist and art historic, historian Michael Birch for their major roles, along with Nancy Lang, Rebecca Middleton, and Emma Hambly of White Pines Productions. You created such an amazing movie that really highlights the untouched nature that can be found in Algoma. This movie movie is a beautiful tribute to the art and life of the Group of Seven, seven of Canada's greatest landscape painters as they adventured up in Northern Ontario in search of inspiration. The beautiful landscape in this film really showcases why every year thousands of tourists travel to Northern Ontario and to my riding of Algoma Manitoulin, Mr. Speaker. From watching this movie, you just get a sense that everyone involved had such passion for the work they were doing. It conveyed perfectly the wilderness, the beautiful wilderness wilderness of Ontario's north. This movie makes you want to retrace your steps along with the shores and cliffs and lakes of Algoma and Lake Superior. I also wanted to highlight Algoma Central Railway, which the cast and crew have stated without their cooperation, this documentary could not have been made. Congratulations. Great statement. Thank you. I'm sure the members uh, want to know that uh, the founder of the Group of Seven, Lauren Harris, was born in Brantford, Ontario. Just tell, just saying, just saying. Just saying. He, uh, <laughs> member statements. The me sounds like a statement. The, the member from Ottawa South. Here, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to stand and rise today and say I, I had the opportunity with the uh, Attorney General a few weeks ago to attend the seventh annual Somali Hope Academy Gala in my riding of Ottawa South. And the, so the Somali uh, Hope Academy is a local charity whose vision it is to reach out to poor and destitute children in Somalia and offer them a free education. The founder of the Somali Hope Academy is Sergeant Mohamed Elmi of the Ottawa Police Service, more affectionately known as Sergeant Mo. And Sergeant Mo's vision was to help those children, help those children in need, to get them an education, to give them opportunity. So Somali Hope Academy has built a school, and last year they received over 300 children in that school. So their next project is to build a well so that they can make the school self-sustaining. Wow. And I want to congratulate the Academy, Sergeant Elmi, uh, his Ottawa Police Service colleagues who always support him, uh, to all the volunteers that were there that night, uh, to restaurateur Dave Smith, who was there doing a live auction and, uh, and was very good at enticing people to open their wallets. Uh, I'm really pleased, Mr. Speaker, to represent a community 
where families from over 125 countries speaking 90 languages have chosen to make home. And what really amazes me is our ability inside our community, as in many communities in Ottawa South, in Ontario rather, to reach outside and to realize that we need to support those around the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Great. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Melbourne, Middlesex North. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, it's an honour today to rise in the House on behalf of the PC Caucus and our leader, Patrick Brown, to mark the 226th anniversary of the adoption of the Polish Constitution, the world's second oldest constitution. Wow. The signing of the Polish constitu Constitution on May 3, 1791, is an event of great pride for Poland and a significant moment in the history of democracy. It has served as a symbol of freedom during the 120 years of partitions and during the Nazi and Soviet occupation. Ontario's Polish roots run deep with a history dating back to the Confederation 150 years ago, before the Confederation. Our province is home to half a million Canadians of Polish heritage. The values of freedom, democracy and the rule of law, which is this day celebrates, are values that we share in Canada. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the establishment of Camp Kost Kostiuszko, a Polish army training camp at Niagara-on-the-Lake. It was here in Ontario where 22,000 Polish soldiers trained in 1917 to 1919 to fight against Germans on the Western Front. Today, the small piece of blessed ground in Niagara-on-the-Lake symbolizes both the patriotism of the Poles and the alliance between Poland and Canada, two countries which are brothers in arms and share their love of freedom. I look forward to attending this year's Jubilee pilgrimage to Niagara-on-the-Lake to pay homage to the soldiers who have paid their highest price for the protection of our and values of our two countries. In Poland, May 3rd is deserved as the most important civic holiday in Poland since regaining independence. It is free from work and many celebrations, parades, exhibitions and public events take place. To all my Polish Canadian friends, friends, happy Constitution Day. Stola. Thank you. The member from Etobicoke, Lakeshore. Well, Mr. Speaker, once you've had Polish, that's all you relish. So I'm pleased to stand uh, today to speak to the Polish Constitution Day. Um, May 3rd is Polish Constitution Day, a very important national holiday for Poland and people of Polish heritage around the world. Polish Constitution Day celebrates the declaration of the Constitution of May 3rd, 1791, one of the landmark achievements in the history of Poland. This historic document was the first democratic constitution in Europe and second in the world only to the U.S. Constitution. Despite being in effect for only 19 months, the Constitution of 1791 helped inspire Poles to have an independent and just society for generations. It did not save the Polish state at the time, but it did save the Polish nation. And although the celebration was banned under various authoritarian regimes between 1792 and 1990, Constitution Day is now openly and proudly celebrated in Poland and around the world each day, each year. Today, members of Polonia were at Queen's Park to commemorate this important day, and I'd like to specifically recognize Mr. Jacek Boguski, Secretary of State of Agriculture for the Republic of Poland, Mr. Grzegorz Morawski, Consul General of Poland, and Mr. Juliusz Kirejczyk, President of the Canadian-Polish Congress Toronto Branch, and other, other distinguished guests who are here to celebrate the 226th anniversary. I want to thank these community leaders for all their efforts in keeping our Polish traditions and heritage strong in Ontario. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Bruce Cario and South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise to share at the House some exciting news from accessibility advocates who are working diligently to bring the new dynamic symbol of access to Ontario. On April 23rd, I joined the Forward Movement co-founders Dylan Itzkowitz and Jonathan Silver at the Centre for Social Innovation in Toronto, where they launched before 100 supporters, including Stopgap Stop Gap founder Luke Anderson and gold medal Paralympian Paul Rosen, the new dynamic wheelchair symbol they're hoping Ontario will adopt. The idea behind the new icon is to stop associating people with disabilities with the image of a stationary person in a stationary wheelchair and accept the fact that they can be just as active and engaged as the rest of us. For this reason, the new graphic shows movement, emphasizing differing abilities. Its background is still blue, but the person in the wheelchair is leaning forward with their arms up behind them, looking to be on the move rather than sitting still. I first learned of the new dynamic symbol of access when I met Dylan about a month ago at Queen's Park and was immediately inspired by his story and campaign. Two years ago, Mr. Itzkowitz was suddenly shifted to a wheelchair-reliant after he was hit by a drunk driver in North York. He has since co-founded the Ford Movement together with Mr. Silver and they're working hard to bring the Accessible Icon Project to Ontario. 
I want to clarify that the forward movement isn't pushing for old symbols to be changed, which were created back in 1969, but rather for the new symbol to be used going forward. Mr. Speaker, I am fully supportive of the change as I believe it's a good way to change perceptions and educate people about the importance of removing barriers and making Ontario more inclusive. As such, I pledge to do what I can to help advocate for that change here at Queen's Park. I invite members to visit the website, themoveforwardmovement.ca, and check out the new and exciting accessible icon, which is now also part of the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.